Saturn in astrology. This planet is probably one of the most controversial planets and astrological bodies to speak about. Um, many different astrologers have different opinions on the significance of this planet and what role it plays in a birth chart or in a transit, and I'm really excited to come on today and speak about my own opinions as an astrologer myself, what I've seen, how I've worked with Saturn, how I've seen it affect people, and um, give you some of my own ideas and uh, philosophies about this really incredible planet. If you're new to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and turn on the bell notifications. And if this video resonates, do hit that like button so that the YouTube algorithm can show a little bit more Saturn to a little bit more people, as I think that Saturn, like no other planet, deserves to be out there. And we need, um, I think, in the astrological community to always continue, um, you know, growing our ideas behind Saturn because it really is one of the most influential uh, placements in a birth chart, in my opinion. Um, also, as I was saying, when it transits your chart, when you get a strong conjunction, opposition, or square from Saturn, you know it. You know, it is one of the most, I think, detectable energies because Saturn is that. It is about the real world. It's about the manifested, um, tangible, material world. Um, so it makes sense that whenever you are really activated by Saturn, that it has very distinct and obvious uh, manifestations. So this video is the sixth video in my Through the Signs series. I've made videos about the Moon, the Rising Sign, Mercury, Venus, and Mars so far, and by the time you're watching this video, perhaps there are even more entries. I will be linking that playlist below as well as in the top right hand corner, so you can go and check out other parts of this series, because this series has been just wonderful. We love to come together um, and make these super huge comprehensive videos, as each one of these videos tends to be one or two hours long altogether, because they're completely comprehensive. I talk about the planet, and then I talk about, you know, other important aspects um, involving it, and I of course go through every single sign placement for the natal chart um, of the planet, so the planet through every single sign. And as of now, there are five other entries, so be sure to go and check those out if you enjoyed this video um, after you've checked out your sign or listened to the entire Saturn video. Definitely go and check out Mars, Moon, Rising Sign, Venus, Mercury, and um, yes, I need to make more entries as well, so if you want a Jupiter video, or a Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto video, Midheaven video, um, hit the thumbs up and that will be a signal to me to make another installment in this series. So without further ado, everyone, let's go ahead and dive right into Saturn. Okay, so intro to Saturn. Saturn is oftentimes the very first planet I will look to when I'm looking at a birth chart for the first time. Um, there are exceptions, you know, sometimes a certain configuration will jump out at me and that'll grab my attention, but um, I always know that uh, Saturn is usually one of the first places I will focus, you know, if I'm like working with a client or if I'm also looking at, you know, a transit or an event happening, um, I will usually look at how Saturn is involved because uh, Saturn really does make things real, conscious, and tangible for us, so oftentimes um, the angle of which it is, um, you know, connecting to another other transit or by which it hits a certain placement in a birth chart will usually determine how somebody experiences those, um, you know, placements because Saturn really um, m makes it real life, you know. Um, it really turns energy into something experienced by humans. So as we uh, start to think about Saturn and as we start to um, look into Saturn, I think it's important to think about the nature of energy in general. Um, you know, in this, I guess, plane that we're on, on Earth, we are in a very, um, you know, tangible, real, material dimension. Um, and with that being the case, the planet in astrology that we've ascribed to the real tangible will um, probably be most noticeable. And um, that's why everybody has, I think, such a different opinion of Saturn. Um, if you've done any research into Saturn so far, you've probably seen different astrologers take very different uh, schools of thought with it. So I'll lay some of those out. I would say the most common uh, school of thought around Saturn is that it is um, malefic and that it is um, sort of bad luck, that it is always, um, you know, creating limitation, restriction, dark night of the soul, existential crisis, crisis in general, 
um, causing a sort of um, warp, I would say, into the consciousness in the sense that the experiences that we go through while having a difficult Saturn transit are so extreme and so visceral and so problematic at times that we don't really know how to cope from it. It's like pressure, you know? I think that, you know, typically many astrologers associate Saturn, yes, with those limitations, with trials, with pressure, with tribulations, with, um, you know, uh, control issues, with bad luck, with um, captivity as well, conviction, uh, sentencing, judgment, uh, solemn experiences, frugality, poverty, all of these things are tied to Saturn indeed. Um, so that is the most like typical school of thought is that Saturn is going to be evocative of those things. Um, there's another school of thought that shows Saturn as more of a, in, in a slightly more benefic light, in the sense that it uh, deals more with empowerment, uh, rewards for long-term um, commitments, that it represents the uh, benefits of hierarchy, that it represents protection, that it shows uh, quality through trials and, you know, experience and lessons learned through difficulty, that it also inspires ascension through tests, through difficulty, through contraction, okay? through restriction, that there is an overcoming of these, like, difficult, sort of shackled control mechanisms through the facing of them, okay? Um, so those are pretty much the two main schools of thought. My school of thought is kind of combinative, you know, I'm not, I don't really ascribe to one or the other, it really depends, but here's how I feel about Saturn. I really do think that it is um, one of the most uh, conscious choice evoking planets that we deal with. Um, what do I mean by that? Um, we really choose how we work with Saturn, okay? Um, it can be really hard, especially if you, like, you know, for example, having Saturn returns, having Saturn, transiting Saturn conjunct your sun or moon, um, having uh, that in the birth chart too, just a natal Saturn conjunct sun or moon. This is not an easy time, you know, if you're having that transit, if you're going through that, like, it's very very difficult. Um, also, though, there's something connected to karma with Saturn, as it is one of the most karmic planets as well. So I do think that we deal a lot with past lives, and we deal a lot with, um, you know, uh, how we are going at a larger, more broad momentum, like how, what, what the long haul is looking like, what the long term is looking like. And, you know, I think if we're speaking energetically, it is because of Saturn that we have the comprehension of this existence that we have. Without Saturn, there would be no real manifested feeling, okay? I feel like it would be just more universal. If we're talking at a, at a level of dimension, at a level of energy, Saturn is what has given us the... Um, true tangible form it form it is the form so saturn does rule the skin it rules um you know the ground it rules you know walls structures architectures um irrigation anything that creates a system of structure which allows passage so um you think of the circulatory system you think of the nervous system you think of the skin and how protective it is and without all of that form we would be nothingness so um while we are really quick to look at Saturn as perhaps bad luck or malefic experiences. Um, it is only through the formatting or the um, restriction and encapsulation, the, the embodiment, I, I want to say. Saturn is like embodiment. It is only through that embodiment that we perceive in the way that we do. So perhaps it's more of just like a factor of being in this embodiment being in this incarnation and how influential Saturn is over it as it rules the structure of this incarnation, um, that is just part and parcel of it, I think. And I think what happens is we get many other aspects of energy. You know, if you think of like Venus and Neptune and um, Jupiter even, you know, the more um, high-flying, energetic, fun-loving, optimistic energies and bodies um, the interplay between all of this can get a little bit messy, you know, so when we have a tough Saturn placement in the birth chart or a tough Saturn transit, what happens is that Saturn tries to then start to embody 
and create form over those more non-tangible energies. So it starts to really form doctrines around philosophies. In Jupiter's case, it starts to really try to, you know, sell, I don't know, art or beauty in Venus's case. And you get into some pretty um, difficult things when Saturn does, yes, try to embody and create real structure, form, and um, value behind things which are not really meant to have that. So that is really where we see the pain of Saturn energy is when we get too connected to selling or embodying or formatting or regulating or restricting or limiting or controlling or governing the different things which are um, non-holdable or non-graspable in reality. Of course, yes, Saturn does have a, an evil malefic side. Uh, Saturn and Pluto and Mars, the three um, malefic... Uh, traditional astrologers say it's just Saturn and Mars, but I say Saturn, Mars, and Pluto um, are malefics. Um, and then the benefics are uh, Venus and Jupiter and kind of Neptune. Um, so what that means, though, is that um, any of the malefic planets will tend within the conscious human mind and ego to be used in a way that creates discord and pain. So if you look at, you know, powerful people, or if you look at, um, you know, people with a uh, good work ethic or people with good, um, you know, uh, Saturnian themes in their lives, like good dis self-discipline, good uh, rigorous capability to accomplish goals, um, this is really, really good and yields a lot of really positive results, but it's very easy also for those same traits to become, um, neurotic as well and um not well you know and you see that with saturn like uh lacking an embrace of flexibility or adaptability um you know never wanting to have the unexpected happen never wanting to lose control never wanting to um help somebody out out or you know um enjoying okay this this is a big thing especially for people with malefically placed saturns um enjoying the pain of others or enforcing other people to be in the same painful situation that you were in uh, people with strong saturn placements really have to watch out for that where especially like with their children um they can you know say that they grew up poor like the saturn parent grew up poor and then they attain wealth in their life and they have children but they ensure that their children never have wealth or that their children also go through the same poverty that they went through even though it's not necessary you see that a lot with very saturnian parents where um yes because they're so saturnian they somehow you know become wealthy or or have more or gain power, but they they take it away from the people around them. Um, you see that a lot with uh, tough, uh, toughly placed like Saturn conjunct Sun people, Saturn conjunct Mars people, um, in the birth chart, or even just connections between those placements. Even Saturn Venus, Saturn Moon, you know, strong square opposition conjunction placements. Um, there's something about those people that they have, or I want to say they have a big lesson to learn about gaining themselves and, you know, overcoming their own obstacles. They're so good at that. But then um, why do they then want to see other people go through what they went through? It's like they, they resent sometimes seeing other people have something easily. And here's the thing, like astrology, astrologically and karmically, there are some people that just gain easily. You know, you have like people with like Jupiter conjunct Venus who just karmically are set up to like inherit a lot of money or something or, or you know, they just get easily. And, and yes, easy come, easy go also you think about that but um saturn people do have like a resent people with like really strong saturn do sometimes resent those who get things easily so it's just food for thought to uh, think about that because and that'll kind of actually segue me into the next uh point of this uh intro is that uh saturn rules parenthood okay saturn rules um the parental hierarchy, uh, the government hierarchy as well, the, any type of authority, any type of, um, you know, also sibling authority as well. So like older siblings or um, aunts, uncles, mothers, fathers, grandparents, uh, school principals, uh, police officers, um, you know, uh, I don't know, governing structures as well. All of that falls under the under the category of Saturn because these all of these people impose rules, they impose regulations, and they have a certain um, control over uh, the lives of other people to some degree. Um, so that is uh, just important to know when we're thinking of Saturn also in our own charts because within every single individual is also like a structure or an orientation 
toward or away from control or, you know, an ability to, like, govern themselves, you know, that is within every single person. You know, we have free will, you know, and it is through our own Saturn that we exercise our free will and that we make decisions with our own free will, that we come to our own judgments, that we decide, okay, I'm going to do this with my life. I'm going to, you know, pursue that career. I'm going to do that school. I'm going to have this job. I'm going to spend my money this way. I'm going to budget it that way. I'm going to buy this. I'm not going to buy this. This is all like Saturn energy that we go through when we're like uh, governing ourselves, when we're uh, dis making our own decisions. So yes, Saturn is very connected to decisions. That's why it is um, exalted in the sign of Libra, okay? Um, so yes, Saturn rules Capricorn. It is exalted in Libra. It is uh, then uh, debilitated in Aries and Cancer. So very cardinal, cardinal, cardinal energy that we have with Saturn. And um, knowing that it's exalted in Libra, it means that good decision-making lends itself toward nice Saturn energy. Also, with it being at home in Capricorn, it means that through uh, persevering, through conditioning yourself, through gaining endurance, through not giving up, through um, a little bit of frugality and uh, sober-mindedness, uh, you will have a well-placed Saturn energy. And then again with Libra, it's like through making those good decisions, through um, pursuing beauty to some degree, uh, toward, um, you know, uh, really strategizing in your life you and weighing out all of your options you have a really nice saturn energy okay what does saturn not like it does not like the energy of aries or cancer that's because aries is about headstrong pushing forward and about pioneering and about you know leaping before you look you know very much the full energy saturn hates uncalculated moves okay um, also with the sign of cancer saturn is an unemotional planet okay so cancer rules by the emotions it rules by the ebb and flow of energy and it's very nocturnal it's very um you know uh, how do i feel what do i want how 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 are my feelings going to influence my decision making saturn um <laughs> abhors that type of uh decision making process because it is not permanent it is completely like a non-tangible type of decision making process so that's why you see the debilitation in, in aries and cancer but something that I think is really important to communicate with uh, Saturn in regards to Saturn is um, that it is not out to get people. When, say, you know that you're going to be having a Saturn return soon, or you know that you're going to be having a Saturn conjunct sun soon, um, or you know that in your birth chart you've got a really, you know, like a tough, you know, Saturn-Venus conjunction or something... Um, I think that this is never what astrology is meant for, to like make a self-fulfilling prophecy around like, oh my gosh, I have this tough placement or this tough transit, I'm going to really have a hard time. Um, I think it's just really important to think about our philosophy as people and to think about, um, you know, how sometimes it is that limitation or it is that lack or that control that really gives us a capacity to realize happiness or a capacity to measure well-being. So if you think of having a gigantic cake in front of you, um, that cake tastes really good when we have a small slice of it, but by eating the whole cake, it's not something enjoyable anymore. And that's sort of what Saturn helps us to realize, and it really makes life beautiful in a different kind of way, where through, you know, only having that relationship having lasted three months and having the horrible breakup, it's only through that that we at times realize how perfect that person was or how much we were committing to that relationship and there was a more important lesson in that than marrying that person and living happily ever after because we would have completely like essentially eaten the whole cake and it would not have had that limitation so it wouldn't have also had a spectrum for a sense of importance or a sense of you know uh, committing what happened there to a higher goal so uh, definitely thinking about that too like how we commit certain things that had difficult endings or had uh, limited outcomes, how that becomes a bigger, more broader, expansive perspective for us. So that's like Jupiter. That's like the interplay of Jupiter and Saturn, because Jupiter is about the expansion, about the philosophy, and about the um, you know higher moral of an experience. And Saturn is also that to a degree, but it's opposite. So it's through contraction. It's the it's the um, simplification, it's the contraction, it's the regulation, it's the um, molding and the manipulation. When I say manipulation, I mean like um, 
manipulating something with your hands. Not so much like emotional manipulation. That's not really Saturn's territory. It's a very truth-oriented planet. Um, you know, things like Saturn in Scorpio, Saturn in Cancer, Saturn in the water signs, yeah, it can uh, become emotionally manipulative, but it's not really what that planet's about. But when it comes to, um, you know, molding life and working life and, and it, almost like you're molding clay, you know, that's very Saturnian. So it does lend itself in the opposite way of Jupiter to getting toward that higher moral, to getting toward that higher philosophy. And if it wants to, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that that will be perceived by every single person, but in the long run, it gets there, okay? Um, because yes, I, I feel like I'm exercising my own like Jupiterian capacity to try to, uh, you know, uh, summarize this this with Saturn. This isn't really how it's perceived. It's not really perceived as like, wow, this like warm, high flying moral that I've learned through limitation. You have to have like a pretty lofty Jupiter to see it that way. But what's actually happened is that, okay, so through contraction or through restriction, I have gained more and I have, you know, understood the value of something in a different way. You know, you don't understand the value of the chocolate cake when you've eaten, you know, 25 pieces of it. You don't understand the uh, value of money before you've um, maybe been taxed. Saturn does rule over taxes. It rules over everything like that. So, you know, we, we learn a lot about value through having less, okay? And um, as we learn that lesson, then we overcome the psycho-spiritual need to be taught through less to be taught through scarcity and then through making these like really incredible long-term decisions and through working with you know time saturn rules time also as those things come together we have a type of wealth or a type of security or a type of stability that is uh quite literally unbreakable okay so saturn does offer that it is about wealth it is about security it is about stability and sober decision making and we don't see it as that when we're first experiencing it. We see it as existential limitation. We see it as being taken from. We see it as um, life-shattering pain and life-shattering disappointments oftentimes. So if you're at a phase in your life where you're experiencing a life-shattering disappointment or where you don't know how to go forward or where you feel you've been like stolen from or taken from or you know, uh, having a sense of guilt or conviction or grudge or victimhood as well, Saturn energy will make itself quite prevalent for anybody who's gone through a trauma or for anybody who's gone through, you know, a really difficult time. Not so much in the way that Pluto will, not so much in the way that even like Mercury will as well, where, where there's like this really strong conscious, you know, um, exploration of trauma, you know, sort of like what we do on the channel. This is not really Saturn. I mean, Saturn is structuring it, and, and I consider myself quite a Saturnian intuitive. Um, but we're more so using like Pluto Mercury energy here because we're like going into the depths and we're making it all conscious. Saturn will just kind of be that, you know, that surrounding structure that helps us to facilitate that hermit mode or it helps us to facilitate the healing process, helps us to uh, feel secure enough to let ourselves in on the um, discoveries that we need to make about our own path. And, and also... What I think is most beautiful about Saturn, especially if, you, if you've got like a Saturn-Pluto contact or if you've got, um, you know, like Saturn um, placed into a water house or in a water sign or something, in a lot of senses, you can uh, allow your own difficulties or your own pain or your own um, torment to be transcended and transmuted into progress or into ascension or into an incredible career also. Um, Saturn does give that uh, possibility to work with everything, you know, everything is malleable and moldable into a greater sense of stability and security with Saturn energy. And that will kind of be my intro into Saturn, everyone. Um, and without further ado, let's start to look into uh, Saturn signs. So I'm really excited. I hope you guys are as well. Um, first off, of course, we do have Saturn in Aries. Okay, so Saturn in Aries people, yes, this is one of the debilitations as we were talking about in the intro. So it's one of the tougher placements for Saturn because the sign of Aries is about, you know, just pushing forward and it's about, um, you know, that really uh, sacred masculine energy of, you know, 
just progress at any cost, you know, um, leap before you look. And I think that uh, what this placement in a chart deals mostly with is the um, control of impulse. So again, Saturn is the control and Aries is ruled by this, the planet of Mars, uh, which is about impulses. It's about um, driving force, life force, motivation. Also, it is about the physical body and about, um, you know, conditioning, health, um, how strong you are. So, like, the physical strength with Saturn and Aries can struggle. So you can see, like, um, a, a perceived feeling of weakness. Like, I think the main thing that Saturn and Aries people deal with is um, fear of weakness, fear of also um, anything dealing with the body, because Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, so it is also about embodiment. Interesting that these two embodiment energies don't work very well together, because they're a different type of embodiment. Um, you know, so any type of struggle with like body dysmorphia, um, not super strong with this. I mean, maybe like Saturn in Pisces or Saturn with Neptune energy is more so like that. But Saturn in Aries also can be a little bit, not so much from the psychological sense, but from the uh, more of a frustrated sense, like being, fr there's a sense, something about frustration with Saturn in Aries as well. Um, how they deal with their own anger, how they deal with their own temper, how they um, work with their own form and their own body. And the sense of impulse is all going to be really um, front and center. Um, you could definitely see anger management issues with Saturn and Aries, um, and but also working on it. So the thing about Saturn and Aries is, you know, everybody can have anger management issues. Everybody can struggle with controlling their own emotions. Uh, Saturn and Aries can't really get away with it, though. So you see people like maybe having to go to counseling for anger management, or there's always maybe someone above them, like looking at them, like a counselor, or um, something about uh, service also comes up with Saturn and, Aries, Saturn and Aries. So, you know, community service or something about, you know, um, any, any type of issue with impulse control is very quickly... I want to say like persecuted with Saturn and Aries, so that's what's difficult with this sign is they can't really get away with much, okay? It feels like they have to be on their best behavior, it feels like they have to um, also like keep this in mind, like um, they have to really think about, okay, is what I'm doing kosher, is what I'm doing like, you know, um, reckless, or is it something that could bring difficulty to myself or other people who's paying attention to this. I also feel a bit of paranoia with this placement too, like who's watching me, what am I doing, um, you know, do I have any privacy? There's something about privacy also with Saturn and Aries, um, because again, Aries, the energy of Aries, all the fire signs, is a front and center, like watch me type of energy. Anybody with a lot of fire in their chart is um, popular, or, you know, even if they're not like popular, they're seen or they're watched or they're noticed. Um, again, fire, the energy of fire is attractive. So putting that with Saturn could give you like a very, um, like they could do good as an actor, they could do good as a performer, they could do good as, you know, someone who um, takes, who's taken notice of, okay? Um, in that way, they can also be like made example of, or, um, you know, people can, I don't know, kind of objectify, I think, Saturn and Aries as well. There's an objectification of the, of the persona or of the... Um, or of the essence of the person. So I, I think of things like, um, gosh, you know, um, like pop stars who are kind of like objectified and it's no longer about their art. It's about like their money-making potential and about their, you know, um, any, anything that's like also like modeling. So models who are, you know, it's not about them as a person. It's about who, what they represent and about the clothing. Like the objectification is something that I think this Saturn sign really has to take into account and transcend. So entering into careers that don't deal with objectification is important. Um, and just uh, making sure that they're like uh, allowing their body to grow. Okay, so there's something, maybe they have like a shorter stature. Um, smaller people in general with Saturn and Aries, because Aries is very small and Saturn is also a very constricting energy, so they might be 
uh, petite or um, just, you know, even if they're like tall or whatever, they feel like small energetically, like people, like, like they have like a smallness in their vibration. So that's just important to keep into mind and that definitely has its own advantages as well. But again, this is one of the debilitated placements and, you know, I've talked about this in this entire series, but debilitated is not always a bad thing. It just means when you have a debilitated placement, everybody has debilitation somewhere in their chart. Most of the time it's very rare to not have any debilitations. So don't freak out by hearing that it's debilitated. It just means that these two energies, whichever ones have come together as a debilitation, both need a type of conscious focus. So the energy of Saturn, like we've talked about for the last bit here, um, it needs focus. The energy of Aries also, the energy of impulse and um, and uh, desire and life force needs focus. And how are they combining together in your pursuits? Okay, just a good food for thought. Okay, Saturn in Taurus. Um, I quite like Saturn in Taurus. It is a very regimented energy, okay? So this combines the energy of Saturn and Venus, which means that these people are going to be very focused on beauty, very focused on... Um, sometimes obsessively focused on like what they're wearing, how they're coming off, what their styles are, you know, having styles that can be difficult to maintain like hairstyles or um, wearing clothing that's quite uncomfortable or difficult to maintain, um, you know, uh, Saturn and Taurus, sometimes like there's something very uncomfortable about everything okay there's it's like uncomfortable because okay so taurus is the sign of comfort taurus is the sign of um you know feeling completely perfectly embodied in an earthly sense again we have two embodiment energies coming together and th this one is not debilitated like the uh, previous one we just talked about but um Oftentimes, the way that we can interpret Saturn is like sort of the opposite of what the sign is. So Taurus being the sign of comfort, Taurus being the sign of enjoyment, and also of uh, financial stability. Um, putting Saturn into that sign, we can think the opposite. So it can be like the energy of discomfort, the energy of, um, you know, a bit of financial instability, you know, feeling a bit of lack. Um, and also just, I think, tough beauty regimens. So you can definitely watch out for like the addiction to uh, beauty regimes or, um, you know, plastic surgery or, I don't know, Botox or fillers or something there that, that can be overdone with this placement. Um, you know, too much cosmetics, too much emphasis on the physical, too much emphasis uh, um, on the body and the projection. You know, I think what we want more so with uh, Saturn and Taurus is more of a, a ritualization of beauty and something that is enjoyable and uh, brings you a sense of power. So yes, having that like wonderful skincare routine, having, you know, those beautiful fragrances, having all of those things, but not being like uh, too obsessive or constricting with, with them at the same time. Um, also, aside from the physical appearance with Saturn and Taurus, um, there can be a self-limiting belief about money, about value, about, um, you know, houses as well, property. The second house, which is what Taurus rules over, is about what we own. It's about, um, you know, tangible things, aside from their emotional value. It's just about tangible things, so houses, money, real estate, um, not in not having an emotional connection to those things, but just having an ownership there. So putting Saturn in that area, you might have like a lot of inheritance or you might have a, like you might inherit a lot of objects, even if it's not like very valuable things, you might, like one of your parents could have been a hoarder and you might inherit all of that and have to deal with it. I see that a lot with Saturn and Taurus, like um, inheritances that are valuable, but also very difficult to handle. Um, so, you know, Saturn and Taurus can be like, um, also inheriting treasure without realizing it. So make sure that you, you know, really pilfer through what you have because you might have something more valuable than you know. Um, but inheritance is very, um, indicated with this, with this axis, Saturn in Taurus and Saturn in Scorpio both deal with inheritance. Um, so that can also be like the inheritance, um, this is more so for Saturn and Scorpio, but Saturn and Taurus, as it is the same axis, can also deal with inheriting beliefs, inheriting emotions, inheriting an ancestral way of coping. So say that like everybody in your family um, has always had like anger problems or everybody in your family has always been like very passive aggressive. Um, Saturn and Taurus, you'll start to inherit that and there's actually a possibility to change out of it or to, um, as I think that's one of the reasons that uh, with this incarnation of Saturn and Taurus is going to be about changing an ancestral 
karma or changing an ancestral emotional pattern. It could be. That's more so with Saturn and Scorpio, but I see it sometimes with Saturn and Taurus too. Um, also, what else will I say about Saturn and Taurus? Um, food, okay? Taurus rules over food. So watch out for food insecurity. Watch out for what you are eating. Um, there can be like malnutrition with Saturn and Taurus, um, eating disorders as well. Um, in any direction, you know, it, it just can be a difficult relationship with food. Um, but also, the great thing about Saturn is where there is difficulty, there is ability to make progress. So you can go from having like a difficult relationship with food to an incredible relationship with food over time, where food plays such a beautiful and integral role in your life. And you maybe you become a really great chef. So Saturn and Taurus can cook really well, it can um, prepare food really well, it can prepare the healthiest, most wholesome, most um, stabilizing and securing food. So I think that that would be one of the first places that I would focus as a Saturn in Taurus is um, making or cooking myself the meal that really makes me feel good. And I know that it's healthy and I know that it's wholesome because from that internal point of your digestion um, and your absorption of nutrients, that will reflect in every aspect of your life and things will just start to get healthier and healthier in every sense. Getting healthier is a big part of this Saturn placement through what it eats, okay? Also, again, paying really close attention to the fit of clothing, to the fit of material that you're wearing as well. Is there an allergy, perhaps, to certain materials? Is there um, an allergy to fragrance? Is there an allergy to um, something in the home? Uh, different. You need also earth around you, so having flowers in the house or having plant house plants is really good for this placement, but watch out for allergies also. Um, and you want to just uh, really think about what fits, okay? Does this career fit me? Does this um, type of clothing fit me? Does does this fit me, or am I trying to adhere to some kind of trend? There can be, like, damage done to the emotions by, like, trends, or, you know, beauty trends, or, you know, like, what one should wear, or what how one should come off societally is... Um, not good for this placement because that's very Aquarian. That's a square to Taurus. So what I feel is that Saturn and Taurus has to do its own thing and have its own comfort and have its own fit in life. Okay. Okay. Saturn and Gemini, um, Saturn and Mercury's sign. So, oh gosh, Saturn and Gemini. It's a good play. It's not a debilitated placement, but, um, it's like very attention deficit. It's very, um, you know, like mind in many places at once. Um, and also it can be difficult to focus with Saturn and Gemini. Hard to, um, maintain focus, hard to get things done. There can be a lot of things left undone. There can be, you know, um, also difficult relationships with siblings, difficult relationships with friends and acquaintances, um, uncles and aunts also. So more distant relationships can have a heaviness about them. Like maybe there's like a very crazy cousin or a very crazy uncle or aunt or um, work colleague or something that causes a lot of hassle. I see that a lot with Saturn and Gemini. Interesting, I have a, I've worked with a lot of people with Saturn and Gemini, so I think I know this placement very well. Um, but it does tend to want to like explore astrology and explore things like this. Saturn and the air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, really enjoy um, probing with their mind and understanding the physicality of life through mental processes. So that makes astrology a really great fit for Saturn and Gemini. They could be a good astrologer. They can benefit from astrology or any type of psychology or... Um, you know, uh, philosophy relating to the interior aspect of life. Um, Saturn and Gemini also, um, you have to think of reactions too, you know, because Mercury as a planet, which is the ruling planet of Gemini, is about quick reactions, um, quick reflexes also. There can be a delaying of reflex with Saturn and Gemini. Um, something needs to be reacted to quickly, but it is nullified instead. I find that to be the most frustrating part for Saturn and Gemini people in general, is they feel like they've not reacted quick enough, or they feel like they've just not considered what needed a quick response. So a lot of their learning process becomes about um, reflexes and becomes about uh, the reacting process and um, the nervous system also. So uh, watch out for autoimmune diseases with this one. Watch out for, um, I mean, it's not so bad. Like, again, this isn't a, a debilitated placement, but I just think that putting Saturn into the conscious mind like this, into the very quick electrical mercury energy is tedious and cumbersome. There's something tedious about this energy and also something um, compelling, though, also. They, they have a 
nice sense of captivation, a nice sense of being compelled to do certain things, good life force, good motivations, good, uh, strong, uh, stick with itness also, but life really calls them to react more appropriately or to, um, react more quickly or to not lose their endurance. They need to really work on endurance. So endurance training could be really good. Um, long distance running, anything that builds up their endurance, because there's something that struggles with endurance with this one, because it's so quick and it's, they're more so of a, like, um, uh, they use all their energy really quickly and then they have to rest for a long time. They use a lot of energy, then they have to rest for a long time. And that does not really lend them to making the progress that they want. Um, really, really good goal setters, really good strategizers. All of the Saturn air signs have a great ability to think something over. So overthinking though, and over, uh, over postulating, over considering without action is also, um, seen, but, uh, you know, you can still let what is there shine anyway. So careers in like information technology, careers in strategy, careers in planning, uh, wedding planning, careers in anything that deals with, you know, that really deep thinking over and over and over again. And, um, you know, that does manifest eventually. So, uh, Saturn and Gemini, I think just has to really consider what they can do with their planning and strategic abilities. Cause that to me feels where they really shine. Also, I think it's really good for any Saturn and Gemini person to just think about <laughs> think about what they're thinking in comparison to what they're living, okay? Again, the, duplic the duplicitous nature of Gemini uh, is reflected here and made real. So there might be a very different internal world as compared to the external world that they're living. They might be living a totally different life on the inside than they are on the outside. Watch out for a double life or um, any type of two-facedness, because Saturn really doesn't like this type of thing. <laughs> um, Saturn likes for things to be uh, more transparent and more wholesome and more, um, well, like, strong and one in the identity, like O and E, like one identity, not not like multiple identities. Watch out for like making aliases or being a lot of different people with this placement. I Yeah, that's really interesting. I think I just hit the core of this, but even if it's not official like that, like, are you like going to different towns and like, I don't know, like, like maybe you drive three hours away to a town that you never go to and you, you give yourself a new name for the night or something. And you're like, today I am Greg and I'm not Sky, I'm Greg for the day. And, and, um, I'm, and, and I think that Greg works at an accounting firm and Greg, um, is going to retire in five years and make a new company or something. And today I'm going to be Greg. Like there can be a craziness like that, like it, to, 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 a, to a degree, it can get a bit dissociative with uh, Saturn and Gemini. So you want to look out for that, like the desire to be somebody else or the, the, the desire to be somebody else for a day, um, to kind of like pretend that you're not who you are, um, identity issues with this one. And of course, I'm exaggerating a little bit with that last hypothetical, but I think what I'm trying to get to is that uh, Saturn and Gemini is um, having to watch out for that, about being someone that they're not, about multiple identities, about aliases, about, um, you know, lack of authenticity, about grass is greener on the other side, you know, Greg the accountant lives better than me, so I want to experience Greg's life for a day, you know, that type of thing. And I think that that can be channeled in a more positive way, like experiencing other cultures. Again, this is the Gemini Sagittarius axis, so, you know, um, visiting foreign countries and uh, seeing the way that others live lives can be very good for this placement and drawing up comparisons. And uh, so maybe the life of an anthropologist would be really, really wonderful for Saturn in Gemini. Um, Saturn and Sagittarius also, or anything in the arts, anything that, or acting also, anything that lets you in a, I guess, appropriate way, see other identities or experience other identities, um, foreign traveling, living the life of, I guess, a French person uh, for a day, for a week or something as you're on a vacation to France or on a work trip to France or something, um, acting, getting to play people from different walks of life in character could be really good for Saturn and Gemini. I feel like this placement really needs to experience um, other identities in, in a way that is um, maybe benefiting them or like for official purposes. So, you know, being an author, writing in first person as another person and then selling that book, um, being an actor, playing different roles and being compensated, like there has to be some kind of Saturnian officialization of it. And it's not like something that's channeling in a 
kind of like freaky way where you're like thinking, I think I'm just going to make an alias and start, you know, flying to New York um, once a month and being a different person. Like, not good, not good for Saturn and Gemini. Something is crazy about that. Um, but I feel that it's like a desire that a lot of Saturn and Gemini people have. So how can you hone in on that in a way that actually works for you and in a way that is like appropriate, you know, maybe starting a business like with a very creative name and like a very creative branding and you get to kind of live as that brand like things in like very officious Saturn ways of experiencing different identity I suppose would be um, indicated for this Saturn placement um, but yeah taking it back to the level of you know thoughts and health with Saturn because Saturn does deal with health to some degree too um, you got to keep your mind healthy you got to keep your um, body going and I think exercising and anything that keeps your like endorphins in a healthy place all of that I'm not an expert in this area but it feels like the I guess the biochemistry needs a constant sort of um, resetting through exercise or through something that is um, unquestionably healthy so um, interesting on Saturn and Gemini Saturn in Cancer okay so let's talk about Saturn in Cancer now um, the other debilitated sign of Saturn. So why is Saturn debilitated in Cancer? Um, that is because Cancer is ruled by the moon and um, probably the least two compatible bodies in the sky is Saturn and the moon. Um, for any of you who have had a strong Saturn moon conjunctions natally or have had the transit of Saturn conjunct moon, you would know that these are not good companions, Saturn and the moon, completely opposite, completely uh, different. The moon being about emotional comfort, being about life's natural cycles, being about um, letting your own sense of livelihood influence your decision making day to day. The moon is never the same. So the moon has phases. It goes from its new phase to its waxing phase to its full phase to its waning phase and back to its new phase. And this is a cycle. And Saturn is about preserving and conserving one wholesome thread. So by virtue, both of these bodies do not, I guess, approve of one another because the moon sees the value of shifting and of changing and of never staying the same, whereas Saturn sees the value in always staying the same and having that strong identity and having that strong, um, unwavering sense of self. They both, both of these bodies deal with the self from a completely different perspective, so they clash, you know. Um, when Saturn and the moon come together, Saturn is then forced to go through these, like, never being the same, ebbing and flowing cycles. And then the moon is also then forced to not uh, transition or to not shift also, so it's a very painful painful, painful combination of energies. So my heart reaches out to anybody with Saturn in Cancer. I know uh, people who have Saturn in Cancer in my personal life, and they do not have a very easy emotional time. Um, they're tough. So these are like tough people, especially as they get older. You know, a lot of people might think that Saturn in Cancer is like, you know, whiny or um, Eeyore-like, and they can be. They can be major Eeyores. They can be major like Dark Cloud all the time. Um, but ultimately, they're very tough especially in things that are usually considered difficult for other people. So going through that really torrential divorce or going through that really difficult uh, breakup or life change is not so difficult for a Saturn in Cancer. I mean, it's really hard for them, but they don't express it. Um, however, things that are like smaller can send them over the edge. So like they might have gone through that horrible divorce and been like a really stoic person throughout it, but then, you know, their friend and them have set a date for like lunch or brunch or something on, you know, that Saturday in March and the friend calls and cancels and the Saturn and Cancer person completely loses their, their constitution. You know, they completely like go over the edge about a small like change in plans or a small shift. Um, that happens a lot. There can be a bit of a um, neurotic tendency when it comes to unexpected changes. They're very timely. So very good regimented. Typically, I see that they're usually early for everything like appointments. Um, they will sometimes show up like if they have a date or if they have um, something that they have to be to, they are typically always early early okay just a fun little fact so thinking of that in every sense you know always being early to anything always um you know uh valuing time they really value their own time they really um also are very frugal there can be a hoarding mentality also they can be collectors they can be uh, collectors of money, collectors of stamps, collectors of uh, scrapbooks, collectors of photos, um, collectors of cars. 
um, collectors of property, um, collectors of grudges as well. Um, they hold a grudge really strong. This is like the energy of grudge holding, um, and they have to watch out for that. Um, also, what this Saturn sign really has to be careful with is um, really pushing people away. So there's a very bitter point in this placement, a very tender point, um, about like wanting a sense of family because Cancer rules over family. Saturn does as well. Capricorn Cancer Axis is about family. Um, so they tend to really want to control their family. They tend to really want, even if it's not to control them, to have that strong family unit. And the thing is, is to have a strong family unit, it takes a lot of control and it takes a lot of um, value and a lot of, um, you know, in this era, in this paradigm, to strengthen the family unit requires a lot of, um, you know, willingness to enforce that Saturnian hierarchy that we were talking about with family, you know, so like the mother or the father figure having control and then the grandparents also having a certain type of control, uncles and aunts. Um, so they do have a strong connection to familial hierarchy in that way. And um, what usually happens, though, is you see Saturn and Cancer, people who have not healed this connection to hierarchy or this connection to family, or who have not healed from their own like connections with the disciplinary parent that they had, whether that be the mother or the father, they tend to have estrangements, okay, from family. So they can have estranged children, they can be estranged from their own parents, they can be estranged from siblings, um, and... Sometimes they can have children also who do not see their value, okay? Um, or children that are just like overwhelmed by the heaviness of the Saturn and Cancer person. It is probably one of the heaviest placements to have. Um, again, I know, so if you're listening to this and you have Saturn and Cancer, I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to like freak out or to like let this interpretation be a downer. We'll talk for a second um, after we come through this about the good points of Saturn and Cancer. It's just really important to know, I think, for anybody with Saturn and Cancer or Saturn in the fourth house, um, it's so important to know that um, any type of guilt tripping, any type of control mechanisms, any type of telling a family member or somebody who's like family to you of your dissatisfaction or of your um, disappointments will be like, I don't want to say like punished tenfold. There's something, the, the karma of this placement makes it to where you're very tested on what you, what you voice concern over, what you, what, what you choose to realize regarding um, disappointments or dissatisfactions or, um, you know, any type of, you know, trying to be emotionally manipulative as well. I feel like, so Saturn, we have to remember this about Saturn, is it um, is like a constant, regardless of what sign we have Saturn in, it's a constant view, it's a constant testing, it's a constant sort of energy that watches us, engages our um, choices, and then sort of creates karma around them. So Saturn in Cancer in this debilitated sign is like constantly... Um, sort of testing you on family. It's constantly testing you on, because uh, again, Saturn can be about um, disappointments, dissatisfaction, and using those as control. Cancer can be about emotional manipulation and about, you know, using emotions to get results. So it's a, not a nice combination where people can use their own sense of dissatisfaction to emotionally manipulate. People can, um, you know, try to kind of lord over other people with their own emotional crises. You can also see, um, especially if Neptune is involved, like false memories with this placement. So um, having had maybe a difficult relationship with somebody, you can actually start to um, make the experience more difficult in the past than it actually was. Like say that you, I don't know, you encountered a family member who's estranged, like from you f at the grocery store and you see them and you have like this awkward exchange and they kind of just like move past you and they don't acknowledge you say say that you see them and they just turn the other way and they walk away and what you can do like a week later you're remembering this happening and, you're, and you start to like create new aspects to the story like um they saw me and they snarled at me and then they turned away when they never even made eye contact you've got to really watch out for this i see this a lot with saturn and cancer people where they will kind of um really probe a memory and um not totally falsify it 
but convince themselves that something about a past situation was more um, malefic or made more problematic than it ever was, okay? So, um, what would I call it? It's like a catastrophizing of the past or a catastrophizing of memories and an, in an intensifying of connections with other people um, to the point that there can be a bit of delusion, especially if the moon is close. Um, this is also with all the Saturn in the water signs. Saturn in Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer, but especially Saturn in Cancer, can struggle with a, a, with a delusions because, again, Saturn is the real experiences and the water signs are not fixed and stuck like Saturn is. So it combines those two energies and can give you a bit of a a wavering idea of reality, okay? It's not to freak anybody out. It doesn't mean that you're delusional. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, um, there can be other placements in your chart that totally offset this and give you a very, very good, capable grasp on reality. And this can always be overcome. What I'm trying to really get at, especially for people with Saturn and Cancer, is that um, you've got to really hold yourself at a high level when you're remembering, when you're justifying bad feelings. Like maybe you just don't like somebody and everybody has people that they are not fond of, but watch out for like you know, making a false memory about somebody and saying, okay, that person, you know, snarled at me when they never even noticed you, but now you're maybe making that false memory and now you're telling other people about it and it's totally changing reality for everybody. And then this person who never even saw you at the grocery store is now starting to gain a bad reputation because Saturn in Cancer actually has a strong power at sort of emotionally defining other people, really important. Um, watch out for it because this that's part of this debilitation is you can very easily cause damage to another person's reputation or very easily create the emotional consideration from other people to other people so that's a very strong power to wield and um, may, it might sort of always be a constant test from the universe about how you might do that because I think the really awesome thing about this placement is how much they can um, be empathetic, how much they can give like a real representation of what happened. Once they really fix this uh, reality issue and they really allow their memories to be true, what this placement can do is it can totally overcome any type of um, falsity about reputation or about real things that have happened and it can move into this place where it's almost like symbolic. I've noticed that these people, these people, especially if Saturn is like above the horizon um, in Cancer, they can become like a symbol of their community. They can become like a symbol of a certain way of life, um, almost in like a matriarchal sense, because Saturn is actually a matriarchal planet. Um, it does rule patriarchy as well. It's like both, but um, in Cancer, it's very matriarchal. So there's this great ability to be um, sort of a divine mother or divine feminine type of person once this energy ascends from these like really gritty visceral painful emotional uh things you know experiences and that's what's hard is once they kind of get a taste for that you can get like a very addicted to those difficult emotional experiences and sometimes you don't want out and you think you want out but you don't watch out for indulging in in painful emotional repetition, you know, once you get out of that as a Saturn in Cancer, you can really emerge as a sort of um, hopeful, strong, prosperous person. Um, as again, inheritance is represented with this placement, um, family land, family uh, legacy comes up with Saturn in Cancer. So it's like the tightrope between, you know, having complete adversity and complete existential chaos and then between um, having, you know, high-flying success and uh, strong legacy gained is very thin. There's a very thin veil between those two things. And you have a very easy choice, actually, which side you want to fall on as a Saturn in Cancer. There's something completely with the equal and opposite reaction liberating and strengthening and reforming of a Saturn in Cancer's ability to... Um, be that leader of their family or be that um, strength for other people to the degree that they can totally like 
elicit transformations and elicit emotional evolutions in other people by maybe maintaining a bit of emotional ambiguity. That's really what I would recommend for Saturn in Cancer. You know, anybody can feel how they want to feel. There's no need to, you know, limit or restrict around that. But I would think Saturn in Cancer about how you might um, actually be um, really imposing a lot of regulation on the way that other people around you feel by constantly being such a powerful emotional force individually but around other people, you know, um, that's what Saturn and Cancer has to watch out for is imposing their emotions on other people. And uh, what they don't realize that they're doing is that they are um, really hardcore controlling other people's emotional atmosphere without trying. It's not that I know that it's not that Saturn and Cancer wants to do that. Watch out for having to vent to every single person. Watch out for having to tell your emotional life story to every single person. Watch out for having, for like making an identity around having some kind of emotional catastrophe. You know, we all do have an identity around our emotional experiences. You know, anything that's like really, I mean, horrendous, hor horrendous things like, I don't know, like the death of a child or the death of a parent or the, um, you know, the, um, disease that a spouse had it's like saturn and cancer of course those things need to be honored and they need to be recognized saturn and cancer can become like nothing but that you know where even like 10 years after a death in the family saturn and cancer goes out to lunch with somebody and talks about it still you know and there are times where it's appropriate but just watch out for it saturn and cancer it makes what you do when you, what, what happens when you do that is that um people are then forced into that as well. So it's like not good karma and it makes it repeat over and over and over again. Um, I feel like so many Saturn and Cancers, I'm like preaching to the choir here with, it's just so important because this, <laughs> and I'm talking on it all, it's like the Cancer portion of every single planet has to have so much uh, speaking done. But um, try to not idealize chaos or um, make nostalgic something that was really painful because it invites more of those cycles in. It's really important to know as Saturn and Cancer. There can be a, a desire to celebrate the, pain, the painful experiences of life or the difficult experiences of life. And that can be done well sometimes. I think that a highly evolved Saturn and Cancer, you know, celebrations like Day of the Dead come to mind where that is pretty neat and can be a, a transcending process in and of itself. But um, just watch out for letting it become mundane, you know, where every single day I'm having to like think about all the horrible things that have happened. I'm having to like make it a physical part of my day. I'm having to like, you know, um, smell the cologne that my you know, past um, lover had every single day just to remind myself of the pain that I felt when they left because I'm afraid that if I forget what that pain is like, I will um, no longer have things to be upset about. And if I no longer have things to be upset about, um, I feel powerless. So powerlessness that comes as a result of not having emotional chaos. Um, this is such a heavy placement, <laughs> Saturn and Cancer, oh my gosh. Um, but Again, on the other side of it all, once we've transcended that, as I think every single Saturn in Cancer has to go through this like process of transcending these things, um, it's just so powerful. It's like powerlessness versus power with this transit, and also all the Saturn in Scorpio as well, Saturn um, in Capricorn too, uh, where you just have so many choices every single day of how you're going to make this be, except for Saturn and Cancer, it's all on the inside. It's all emotional. It's about the emotional communication and about emotional, um, and painful experiences and how those things then empower you or not. So that's why this entire dialogue is kind of hinged on, you know, how you communicate with the people in your life, how you communicate emotional experiences. Um, just keep an eye on it, okay? Because this is a debilitated placement and it just requires a little bit of extra work when it comes to the themes of both of these uh, placements. But, you know, overall Saturn and Cancer, to conclude, because we've talked for such a long time about this one individual placement, um, I think that you just need to enjoy what is around you and try to not get too overwhelmed if you can by the past and by memories. And um, again, that emotional ambiguity that I was talking about is the best thing. Like sometimes you don't even need to talk about it. It's like um, if you need to talk about it, maybe it's time to go to a therapist or time to get, you know, an astrologer on board or something. Um, and wa watch out for the people in your personal life um, becoming overwhelmed. You'll see it when it starts happening that, you know, you've, t you've told them this story over and over again, or maybe they're just the type of people who don't have any type of emotional you know, context or ability to talk about emotional situations, you'll see they'll start to like kind of pull back a little bit. The body language will change when they're about to 
not come back, okay? Um, because they're getting so overwhelmed and so burdened by the energy of it all. Sometimes it's not even like the story, it's just the energy of it all. And Saturn in Cancer is heavy, heavy emotional energy. And you guys have got to pull that up into the third eye and into the crown and exercise it as, I don't know, maybe like the best landlord or the best, um, I don't know, um, I don't know, CEO or something needs to be channeled into a more like a non-tangible, you know, like career or health or um, a yoga teacher or something, uh, really try to get it out of the family, okay, because you have, if that power goes through, like, all of your loved ones, it's, like, makes you solitary, because cancer is the solitary sign, so you can really push people away if you're not careful, but also you'll find, like, new loyalties. I feel like with this, again, it ebbs and flows so much, it's such a difficult energy, actually, to talk about, because, you know, while you can push people away, you can also create the most strong, like, family unit, it's like extreme, you know, one way or another with this placement. Anyway, um, let me know, comment below as a Saturn in Cancer, like what your experience is. I hope that this has not come off too tough. Um, remember that there are other placements and other aspects to a chart. This is not like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, there are things that can offset this or contradict this and um, try to take it with a grain of salt. Just remember what we talked about here. And if you remember and take into account like where there gets into a tough territory by, by, by what we've talked about, you can have a perfect ability to balance this, okay? Moving on. So Saturn in Leo, um, Saturn in the sun's sign. Saturn in Leo is about the strengthening of the heart chakra and about um, how you choose to uh, find motivation, what desires you have, and how those things are then made real. I think the biggest focus with Saturn in Leo is... Um, on the capacity to um, find ambition and to strive towards goals. I think this is one of the more striving-oriented Saturn placements, and it's really important for Saturn and Leo to, um, I think, really not deprive themselves of motivation. Sometimes Saturn and Leo can, um, you know, know that it wants this incredible goal or know that it wants to strive in a certain way, but with the Saturnian nature of limitation, it can... Um, deprive itself of certain motivations or deprive itself of certain, um, you know, needs to push forward. Um, there tends to be a major uh, transformation throughout uh, the lifetime within the Saturn and Leo person in how they uh, love and their love language. So uh, Leo is the natural ruler of the fifth house, which also deals with um, casual relationships, um, the concept of love, uh, how we um, enjoy or have fun in context to relationships. It also is the ruler over um, children and more childlike uh, experiences of life. So the inner child is definitely um, coming up with Saturn and Leo. So maybe there's a very uh, strong feeling that the inner child is negated or that this person had to grow up really quickly. Um, also, with like the early love life, there is maybe a really nice and prominent um, experience of love that is maybe cut short, so a very difficult breakup early on or a difficult divorce early on. Um, that has something to do also within the inner child being um, warped or feeling cut off through an early experience of um, betrayal or bereavement through relationships. Saturn in Leo does, uh, kind of like Saturn in Libra, kind of like Saturn in Taurus, also give a little bit of a difficult um, coming-of-age story with relationships and with love relationships. So broken heart with Saturn in Leo, as Leo rules the heart and heart chakra, a lot of this um, emotional growth for Saturn in Leo deals with um, reforming the heart, healing the heart, healing the... Um, you know, traumas that have been heartbreaking, um, really uh, strong for Saturn and Leo. There is kind of a um, an epic novel sense of uh, heartbreak and then also transformation and healing out of that heartbreak. Um, you know, like really wild uh, experiences of love that are so warm, but then become that kind of Saturnian self-effacing, um, you know, difficult experience which then creates power and creates a uh, type of growth. 
But I think one of the most important things for Saturn in Leo is that they really watch out for any type of like over dramatization of things or really beware of um, people who are very obviously problematic. So getting into a relationship with that person who's like very clearly broken with the thought that you can fix them or the thought that things will change or that they will change their character by being in a relationship with you. Um, it's usually pretty clear up front what you're getting into as a Saturn in Leo when it comes to relationships. I think that relationships really is the main way that this uh, placement plays out. Um, and then by the first Saturn return, so like after age 28 to 30, um, it becomes less about relationships and it becomes more about uh, status or, you know, also Leo is the sign of, um, you know, kingship and um, status. So um, you can kind of like have a complete warping of the inner child if you're not careful, if you're still like embracing broken people and trying to fix them or trying to heal them. Um, after, the, after the first Saturn return, there can be a warping of the inner child and life can become all about uh, status, positions of power, or um, just position in society also. So yes, uh, marriages that come with position, uh, relationships that have status implications as well is usually, um, you know, typical with this placement. And uh, mainly just a watch for heart health, okay? There is, obviously with every Saturn placement, we have to look at health because usually in the Saturn sign, you can see, you know, where health ailments are or where there's a potential in every Saturn sign to have health issues. So just keep the heart healthy, um, you know, really watch out for becoming an adrenaline junkie or someone who needs like constant, you know, uh, drama or constant even motivation, constant ambition, some, something that like constantly is getting your heart rate up and constantly making you, you know, um, having have these like chemical experiences of the body. Um, watch out for that as Saturn and Leo because you can see like heart problems or circulation issues, anything that deals with like blood pressure or things like that can come up with Saturn and Leo or Saturn in the fifth house. So it's uh, always going to be connected though to that feeling of the inner child. So it's really important to maintain that connection with the inner child and to not um, cut that off or to not uh, feel that you have to be too adult all the time because there's something about the adult lifestyle with Saturn in Leo that does not quite suit the placement. It needs a youthfulness and it needs a playfulness about it in order to really access the energy and in order to grow. So the main thing with this placement is to just not um, totally abandon your sense of inner child and uh, to also watch out for like that mature status quo oriented lifestyle or relationship person because it's not really what this placement needs. This placement will kind of like want to grow up really quickly and it will want to assume status and that might happen for it, but it needs to uh, maintain the laughter or maintain the humor, the warmth, the heart chakra energy of Leo in order to actually access power. So you can see the disempowered, powerful person with Saturn and Leo, like the person who has status or the person who has the great job or, ha or is the CEO or owns the business yet is also very broke or very um, diminished or very disempowered empowered personally, despite looking the part, if they cut off the contact with their sense of fun, enjoyment, laughter, and optimism. So short and simple with Saturn and Leo. Um, okay, let's talk about Saturn and Virgo. So a uh, very, very perfectionist. This is probably the most uh, type A Saturn placement. So Saturn loves Virgo, though. This is one of Saturn's favorite signs to be in, because um, it really just goes hand in hand. It's very harmonious energy. Saturn is uh, at home in Capricorn, so it likes all the Earth signs to a degree, um, but especially Virgo because it is like the key and the lock to Saturn's per natural perfectionism and natural goal-oriented mentality, natural um, organizing tendencies. Uh, Virgo feel fills it really naturally. So um, the only thing about Saturn and Virgo that is a problem is um, any type of OCD mentality, any type of hyper-perfectionism. Um, they can be so focused on like the texture of a fabric or the texture of a situation that they lose sight of what is actually happening. You know, um, they can get distracted quite easily by things that are off. So disruptions in patterns are quite difficult for Saturn and Virgo. Disruption in routine, disruption or unexpected events can be um, life-threatening, it feels like, for Saturn and Virgo just to like get 
off of routine to have like a canceled shift or a canceled class or some kind of cancellation of meeting that has been um, on the calendar for a while. Um, it's so good for Saturn and Virgo to have like the best calendar or the best planner or the best you know, anything that gives them an idea of time. This, I think the goal of this placement karmically is to just measure time in as many ways as possible. So maybe having a clock in every room, having notepads on every surface, having um, everything perfectly organized is not bad. And it's not like type A or problematic for most of the people with this placement. Um, but once they get organized and once they get things together, they then have to be able to operate aside from that. You know, sometimes even Saturn in Virgo or Saturn in the sixth house can be so oriented toward planning and organization and optimization that they don't actually do anything beyond that. You know, they can plan out their schedule or they can plan out all their actions but then they won't actually become executive within that, or they won't actually then sit down and do things aside from that planning or strategic process. Um, and that can be kind of sad, actually, where this person is always in the assistant role, or this person is always second fiddle, or this person is always, um, you know, uh, the aide or the assistant or the planner. And so they shine as that. They will always be good as that. Uh, they will always be that wonderful secretary or that wonderful, um, you know, assistant or planner or whatever. Um, but I kind of feel like this role actually wants more, um, you know, empowerment itself. And it wants to be more so in the controlling roles as well. So there's a tender point between wanting, um, you know, to do something really grand, you know, like being that CEO or... Um, I don't know, being in a position or something, because uh, Leo and Virgo right now, so so basically Regulus transited over into Virgo. It's always been in Leo. It's the king star, you know, so Virgo's now kind of being activated into that energy as well. So Saturn in Virgo, um, while it has always maybe been this sort of uh, second in command role, it is now wanting to more so ascend into a more uh, central role. Um, but I feel it, it's still struggling to do that. So people with Saturn and Virgo might have a bit of an issue of like, what am I really doing? What is all this planning or all of these ideas really um, bringing on for me? And uh, am I really using all of these capabilities that I have to strategize and to plan in a way that causes me some amount of mobility in a good way? So I think that uh, the main thing for Saturn and Virgo is gaining a new relationship with action. You know, the theme of action, what do I act upon? Uh, the impulses come to mind for sure with this too, kind of like Saturn and Aries, except in the very opposite way, where a lot of impulses might be nullified or negated as a Saturn and Virgo, and you're totally, you know, um, just trying to do the right things and doing everything the right way, the correct sort of instructional um like uh, going by the manual mentality. Um, so definitely innovating a new relationship with genuine and authentic action instead of prescribed action is an important train of thought to consider with Saturn and Virgo. And also what you like and enjoy becoming something that is adaptable to. It's very picky, maybe like very picky eating, very picky um style, like the image, the clothing might have to all be like the same exact material or the same color scheme. Um, and so the identity also then becomes very monochromatic with Saturn and Virgo. And uh, that can also be a huge advantage because then once you've sort of made a solid central thread to your identity, you have a certain usefulness that is never deprived, though you also have a predictability that can be disempowering as well. So it's like a fine line with Saturn and Virgo between like how much do you want to be predictable? At what point in time does predictability become a nuisance? At what point in time does impulsivity become okay and maybe a necessary part of the human condition? Watch out for controlling people or controlling tendencies in general. Any form of over-compulsive dieting or need to uh, totally control the shape or form of something or to uh, be involved in the control of like everything in your life is uh, you've got to kind of maybe let go of certain things and, and foster a more cohesive relationship with the themes of release, okay? Because it's kind of a graspy energy too, kind of like Saturn and Cancer, but not quite so extreme, um, where it's just like your own sense of personal precedence, your own sense of personal um, routine is something so integral and so 
attached to your being that any threats to that can be something that are more serious than they need to be. So letting go, letting God, releasing is a good um, strategy to kind of feel a little bit more happiness because Saturn in Virgo is really challenged in allowing a happy situation to exist, allowing for a natural momentum to um, work itself out. Uh, watch out for trying to have a hand in everything, for trying to kind of like have um, an influence over every single aspect of your life. And because then if things start to go bad, you feel a lot stronger sense of personal responsibility. Responsibility is so huge with a Saturn in Virgo person. So the more that you pull out of, the less I feel like liable or responsible you are for certain things too. And that can be maybe an advantage too. So definitely awesome to form a certain specialty, to have a certain talent and capability that you adhere to and use. And try to watch out for like um, getting off into other territories or shooting really high in territories that are not very uh, specialized for you. Maybe it's good to like, if you want to do those things, to study it up a little bit, to get those talents and then to move into it. Because again, I think Saturn and Virgo, there's something about having your hands in too many places that can kind of come back and uh, be a bit of an issue. But as long, again, as you are using that optimized you know, ability to make changes and, you know, work and uh, make a stronger sense of foundation for yourself in your specialized way, it's like foolproof, okay? So, um, but I think it's really beautiful also to look at other parts of the chart, like the Jupiter placement, the Venus placement, and see what those are indicating too, because I could see a, maybe a really strong like Jupiter, Venus in Aquarius or something as something that might transform this Saturn in Virgo into a much more eccentric um, adaptable energy because Virgo is also a mutable sign so it's adaptable so th what I've previously talked about with Saturn and Virgo is just about the um, almost like fixed nature of this placement and the stick with itness and responsibility workaholic tendencies um, that could be different depending on other placements but that is what I typically see with Saturn and Virgo Okay, let's talk about Saturn in Libra now. Okay, so one of Saturn's favorite signs, Saturn is exalted in Libra, okay? Um, it doesn't mean that things are perfect. It doesn't mean that, you know, there are no issues because Saturn always shows you where there can be problems or, um, you know, difficulties. Saturn in Libra gives you a great, great strategic mindset. You have an incredible ability maybe to play chess. Maybe um, going into the chess leagues would be good as a Saturn in Libra person, and you can maybe win a lot of money through uh, being a pro all-star chess player. Um, and thinking about that mentality with a lot of things, life really is a chessboard for um, Saturn in Libra, you know? So anything dealing with... Also kind of like Saturn in Virgo, except it's much less um, rigid... Saturn in Libra, um, where we have this great planning ability, this great organizational capacity, this wonderful um, comprehension of chain of events and cause and effect. Uh, that's why this is an exaltation, is because Saturn is extremely fond of comprehension. It's extremely fond of the uh, human ability to predict for the future, to understand a certain chain of events, to understand a certain momentum before it happens. And Libra is really good at that. So that's why this is an exaltation. Um, this can also be a very like budget oriented transit or uh, placement as well, you know, transit or placement, um, because what you see with the energy of Libra is the weighing the balance, you know, how much do I want to gain? How much do I want to lose? How much am I willing to give to have this? How much am I willing to um, you know, take to uh, get this as well. Um, so the give and take mentality, the compromise mentality is very well honed with this placement. And that's why these people are quite gifted when it comes to, I don't know, being like a banker or a politician or um, someone who's very good at uh, negotiating, a business person. Um, Saturn and Libra tends to denote wealth and, um, you know, uh, not even always money wealth, but like maybe, I don't know, like, um, uh, status capital or having the right relationships. There's something very diplomatic about Saturn and Libra as well as Saturn and Sagittarius. Um, there's a great ability to have like diplomatic capital. So like knowing the right people, that type of thing, um, you know, having the right connections in the right places, all that stuff is very typical. And even like being born into a family, because again, Saturn is the family, being born into a family that has the right type of connections. It's like well-born usually with uh, Saturn and Libra, that whole concept. And even if it's like born into difficult circumstances or maybe a broken family or like uh, born into poverty or difficulty, something about that ends up being an advantage in the long run. And they oftentimes use their legacy or their heritage or their upbringing as a very, very good um 
I don't know, a weapon to wield in life. It's a very strong power for them, how they've come up, uh, the heritage, the legacy, the history of the family, regardless of what that history is, ends up being something empowering to the Saturn and Libra individual. Also empowering marriages. Libra is the natural seventh house, which is marriage. So marrying well, having strong marriages. And I don't even just mean, you know, marrying well in the sense of like um, belongings, but um, really having good marriages is possible with this. This is always a sign of the right person, meeting the right person, marrying the right person, and um, always having that ability. Um, it's also marrying a good person, like having, being able to attract love relationships that are, um, I don't want to say necessarily good people. It is like good people, but it's like the right people. And it's the people that you need. It's the people who are good for you. It's that Saturn thing. They, they might not be the most like lovey-dovey, um, you know, uh, optimistic and, you know, fantastical people, but they will be very um, security oriented and stable and very neutral on a lot of things. And that will really help the erraticism of Saturn and Libra to then balance out too. Because it can be a little bit erratic in the mind, you know, always weighing different options, you know, really trying to go on, you know, polarized sides of different events, you know. And um, I think that everybody, regardless of their Saturn sign, feels like difficulty in correlation to their Saturn sign. So sure, it can represent a difficult marriage or, um, you know, a difficult relationship that then leads you to understand what a relationship needs to be in the long run. Maybe this is a later in life marriage or a later in life relationship that ends up being so good or later in life connections, later in life um, rewards over time relating to relationships, seventh house things. And Saturn is exalted in this sign, so it tends to just give a little bit of extra good luck in that area. Um, but yes, Saturn's probably um, second favorite sign for sure, Libra. I mean, it could be its favorite. The exaltations sometimes are um, much more nice for the planets to be in than even their home signs. In Saturn's case, its home sign is Capricorn. So um, it just depends. But I, I think that um, anybody with this placement at any time in their life can really um, get things together and have a lot of stability if they choose. Okay, Saturn in Scorpio, Saturn in Pluto's sign, Saturn in the eighth house. Um, what would I say about this placement of Saturn? Um, very, very solidified and stabilized in areas that are hidden or secret. So anybody with this placement is going to have, I don't know, a lot of things where people don't know that things are. Maybe it's maybe it's very secretive. So it's having like the power of secrets, the power of knowledge with Saturn and Scorpio, even aside from secrets or anything. It's like the power of hidden knowledge, the power of, um, you know, hidden facts, hidden understanding. Um, you know, astrology becoming um, maybe a big part of your life as a Saturn and Scorpio, any type of occult arts or occult, um, you know, uh, study. And it, when I say occult, I don't even mean like, um, you know, anything that's like superstitious. I more so mean things that are not like mainstream. So a non-mainstream approach to health, a non-mainstream approach to healing or, um, you know, uh, becoming stronger. Uh, a very, uh, although this can be a very superstitious placement, I will say it's like superstition becoming real. So, you know, maybe you never like walk under a ladder or maybe you really think about and ponder the significance of certain experiences in your life. Like, okay, so I saw when I went out on that day and I was like out on the pier, uh, the clouds completely covered the sun and it became very dark and the waves uh, crept up. And I think that because that happened, it means that I'm um, actually in an existential crisis and I need to have a big change in my life. There's a lot of like allegorical thinking with Saturn and Scorpio. What is the bigger, sim like a very symbolic energy as well, like the symbolism of certain experiences. Like there's no such thing as a coincidence essentially with Saturn and Scorpio. There's no such thing as... Uh, things happening for no reason. Everything has a reason. Everything has a sort of symbolic undertone. And timing is very fortunate for Saturn and Scorpio. And um, not always fortunate, but it's something that they have a very strong hidden capability with is the uh, art of timing, I'll call it for Saturn and Scorpio. So the art of timing, um, also horrendous trauma for Saturn and Scorpio. This is a nasty, nasty placement for like um, unseen, unknown emotional experiences. Um, it ends up empowering the Saturn and Scorpio person in the long run if they can not succumb to escapist fantasies. But I do see, you know, I've worked with a lot of people with Saturn and Scorpio because Saturn and Scorpio people tend to, you know, 
do a lot of like work with intuitives or astrologers or psychics or psychologists, um, it will make you want to really study and work professionally in your deep psychology and emotional center. So a lot of the people that I work with personally have Saturn and Scorpio, so I feel that I know this placement very well. Um, it's unspeakable traumas with Saturn and Scorpio. It does happen. Um, this is the like the because we were talking about earlier how Saturn is the creation of real experience and the creation of um, you know emotional energy coming into the tangible real world. So people with Saturn in Scorpio oftentimes have had a very you know um, extreme sense of trauma or betrayal or such a visceral experience of emotion <laughs> that they. Um, have almost no choice but to either wield it or succumb to it you know that's it's so make or break feeling for a lot of them in that way where they have to like you know okay i'm either gonna let this you know um totally bowl me over and i'm just gonna kind of go into a very nullified negated uh bed rest type of mode or i'm gonna have to stand up and i'm gonna have to wield this power and i'm gonna maybe have to make change for not only myself but many people around me Saturn in Scorpio is the energy of um, change and transformation made real. So it's the ability to transform. It's the ability to um, rejuvenate, to heal. So Saturn in Scorpio people actually have a incredible healing uh, capacity at the cellular level that can heal more quickly, or it can be delayed too if it's like a Saturn retrograde in Scorpio, or if it's got you know some other things. Like healing is always um, accentuated for Saturn in Scorpio, whether it's healing from a emotional issue healing from an injury um, anything like that i would say even like soul healing from like past lives that type of thing too with a incarnation into saturn and scorpio is like you're healing from maybe difficult past life experiences it could be um who knows and on the negative side saturn and scorpio can be the rejection of change or the rejection of transformation the delay of healing the delay of um, natural cycles also as again, um, even though Saturn is not debilitated in Scorpio, it's one of the more difficult signs for Saturn because there's a cyclic nature to Scorpio, kind of like Cancer, and Saturn is very debilitated in Cancer. So I've always had this opinion of Saturn that while it is not debilitated and while there are like really great aspects and powerful, powerful aspects to Saturn and Scorpio, Saturn and Pluto's sign, you know, um, while it is very powerful, it's also a painful placement and it's a... Um, placement that's prone to um, commandeering the personal sense of suffering or pain into um, like power or control over other people. It has to watch out for that. So being very domineering personality type, being a vampiristic, like psychic vampire, very possible with Saturn and Scorpio if you don't watch out. Um, <clears throat> kind of like feeding off of fear or feeding off of, um, you know, problems in other people and not realizing it. So it's maybe it's not super conscious, like I'm going out and I'm going to like thrive off of other people's problems. It's not like that. It's like maybe just seeking out things that are problematic or seeking out uh, psychologically thrilling or um, painful experiences just to understand and grow and uh, know what that means and, and get to the deeper uh, facets of the, those parts of the human condition very much about the human condition with this placement um, also I see that past the first Saturn return uh, things get a lot easier for this placement um, and even uh, you know it, timing aside I see that typically even if these people have had a lot of lack of freedom or lack of personal autonomy it tends to become very in control of its own time very in control of its own identity very in control of its own uh, personal presence, its image. There is a hyper control orientation with time management and um, and what where one has to be, what one has to do to get by. So uh, Saturn in the eighth house also rules like uh, taxes and money, other people's money and things like that. So yes, there's a great ability maybe as a mortgage broker or a banker or somebody in finance, um, landlords, anything that is like a uh, revenue generation that is very passive is perfect for Saturn and Scorpio, like passive revenue generation. Great, great potential there for Saturn and Scorpio. Like they can become like very elite and very wealthy through passive revenue generation. Um, that's kind of what this placement is all about. And uh, money aside, it's kind of like that in every aspect of their life, like passive generation of relationships, passive generation of experiences. They don't really like to be direct. It's a very indirect placement. It's a very ambiguous placement as well power through ambiguity um you know 
presence through uh, undisclosed aspects, you know, things like that is very Saturn and Scorpio. It's, it's power through the hidden, power through the occult, power through what is unseen and what is not known. So um, secrets and stuff like that can also uh, become uh, an issue. Um, and anything like blackmail or corruption also lies within this energy, not, not just Saturn and Scorpio. Like you really can't, with anything super negative like that, you have to watch out for prescribing it to like any one placement because it doesn't mean that everybody with Saturn and Scorpio is prone to that type of thing. But they've got to watch out. Anything like illegal or anything not um, kosher without realizing is really important to uh, get clear with. So yes, having really good advisors, having really good... Um, you know, uh, second opinions on any type of business dealings or anything like that is important for this placement because it can unknowingly actually kind of end up in a weird territory if it gets too ambitious or too, like, um, you know, crazy with goals and stuff. So, um, it, again, it's more about passivity with this placement. It's, it's indirect. So they have to watch out for, like, things like, uh, you know, um, or psychic vampirism, or desire for power becoming a very direct thing, um, because it is prone to, like, power mongering, or, um, uh, not wonderful things, but, uh, contrarily, on the other side, what I also see with Saturn and Scorpio, the more ascended, like, aquiline, eagle types of, uh, Saturn and Scorpio people, is the ability to value and treasure certain emotional experiences that are, like, the foundation of life. So having the perfect relationship, having... Um, an experience with somebody that is life-changing, life-altering, and seeing the power behind that, you know, like the power of charity, the power of helping those in need, like very good um, philanthropical, on the cusp of Saturn and Sa Sa Saturn and Scorpio and Saturn and Sag, we're getting into Saturn and Sag energy here as well already, um, but good philanth philanthropical ability, great charity, uh, charitable mindset, um, really good at being a champion for the underdog is Saturn and Scorpio. That's really good. Um, really wonderful at helping um, anybody achieve anything. Great as an advisor. Great as, um, I don't know, like um, like angel investor or something that is helping mankind. Th th there needs to be a bit of selfless with this sign. Otherwise, it gets like dreadfully ambitious and dreadfully like self self. Um, self-aggrandizing um not always but if there's like a lot of leo in the chart or something you got to watch out so um just keep it clean keep it safe keep it um unimpulsive and um as passive as possible i think with saturn and scorpio okay saturn in sagittarius uh saturn in jupiter's sign saturn uh in the ninth house um very interesting energy of saturn and sag um i'm always really compelled by these people i was also very interested at what was introduced during the time that saturn transited sagittarius around the time of like 2017 um like late 2016 all of 2017 um it was an interesting time for me of um Saturn being in a very uh, different type of energy. So um, this can be a very chaotic placement for Saturn because um, Saturn and Jupiter typically do not have a good relationship. They're opposites. They are the uh, two different polar ideas of um, philosophy and control and uh, non-tangible um, aspects of human life. So, and they're polar opposites. So they're kind of like um, opposing political parties, uh, Jupiter and Saturn coming together. So this is kind of the energy of, um, I don't, what do I want to say? Like, um, it's like a collusion, Saturn in Sagittarius or Jupiter in Capricorn. In a way, it's a little bit debilitated, even though not technically so. Like Ju Jupiter is debilitated in Saturn sign, though Saturn is not debilitated in Jupiter's sign of Sagittarius. But, um, it's kind of an honorary debilitation. That's what I would call Saturn and Sagittarius, the honorary debilitation for Saturn, though it really does introduce some cool things. Um, people with Saturn and Sagittarius are the best at pursuing their purpose, the best at doing really eccentric, lively things. Like These are like the pop stars, the... Um, I don't know, the uh, authors of incredible books, like fantasy books, the people who make creativity a career, so creative careers with Saturn and Sagittarius. It's interesting that my YouTube channel, for example, um, became prominent enough to become a career during Saturn's transit of Sagittarius. So I really understood that you can really make, uh, with the energy of Saturn and Sagittarius, creativity be your career. You can also um, have a lot of like philosophical realism with Saturn and Sagittarius, so philosophies that are realistic and help you, mantras, um, team mottos, uh, self, 
mottos as well that help you to get through, like saying, you know, like, um, I, my, my motto is, uh, strength and perseverance. I don't know. It's just like always repeating that to yourself as you go into like work shifts or something, having this sort of like, um, almost like strategic and capable cheerleading for yourself as well, like cheering yourself on, cheering others on. Um, morale is really indicated with Saturn and Sagittarius. So um, building morale, um, a very charismatic placement this is as well. People with Saturn and Sagittarius tend to be very charismatic and very, um, you know, uh, well-spoken and optimistically driven also. There's a recklessness to this transit though also. There's sort of a uh, kind of like Saturn and Aries except a bit more um, philosophical. This uh, Saturn and Sag can just like steamroll into uh, new careers or new innovations you know, just start that new company when they haven't even like made the product yet, uh, that type of thing. But also it tends to benefit from it. I mean, it's like, um, even though it hasn't made the product, it's like started the company and now it knows how to like, you know, start a company. So maybe that company fails and that product never happens, but now they make a different company. There's a lot of like roundabout, um, kind of impulsive, kind of reckless way of um, gaining you know, status, which is what Saturn is all about, status and career and stability. So Saturn and Sag uh, will sometimes struggle to get like career stability in order, like lots of different careers or lots of different um, titles or positions um, and never staying in one place for too long. This is also the case with Saturn and Aquarius, except Saturn and Aquarius is slightly more auspicious because um, it was previously a uh, ruler of Aquarius. Whereas Saturn in Sag is just a little bit too um, Jupiterian to be uh, greatly auspicious, but it also somehow comes back around to a chaotic sense of success with Saturn in Sag. It's not something that is negated success. It's not something that is denied um, progress at all. It's just a very chaotic roundabout sense of success and progress. Also, um, I tend to see that Saturn and Sagittarius people really struggle with routine, or they have a very unconventional routine, so maybe they're nocturnal, maybe they sleep until like 2 p.m., and then they like stay up for 22 hours and then fall asleep at noon and sleep until like 7 p.m., and now they're like totally nocturnal. Their, their circadian rhythm tends to have a little bit of a too expansive quality where they cannot get onto a rhythm or a routine. Um, and then once they can set a routine and once they can, if, if they have like Virgo in the chart, this is less of an issue, but, um, getting that routine, getting that consistency is very helpful for them because they feel a lot stronger and a lot healthier. Uh, Saturn and Sag has to also watch out for, um, denying health as well and not realizing it. So an issue with circadian rhythm, too much caffeine, too much exercise, too much, um, you know, uh, forgetting to eat because they're thinking about really exciting dreams, you know, can end up in a bad health problem for Saturn and Sagittarius if they're negating and denying the routine needs of the human body to honor that expansive Jupiterian energy. Like Saturn's always kind of watching. It's like, are you going to do what you need to do despite wanting all these lofty things? It's a little bit lofty of an energy for Saturn, whereas Saturn is the natural 10th house. The 9th house is the climb to the 10th house. The 9th house is the ascension, the upward mobility to the 10th house. It's not the status 10th house yet. So Saturn kind of looks down on that like climbing process as something a little bit um, ordinary or something a little bit um, reckless and uh, dangerous as well. So um, there's a there's a kind of um, condescending relation, condescending energy in this placement because Saturn in Sagittarius is naturally antithetical and naturally sort of self loathing because there's like, well, I see that I'm like really trying to climb up this ladder, but I've always been the type of person who looks down on people who climb ladders, but I'm like doing the same exact thing that I've looked down on people for. So they have to kind of reckon what they're actually doing and what they, what their goals and what their motivations actually are and watch out for judgmental flair with this placement. Okay. Watch out for like a, um, flair of judgment or a, or a sort of like expansive philosophical judgy attitude or condescending nature toward other people becoming something funny or comical or hilarious to view, you know, forming a group of friends around the concept of talking down or talking bad or gossiping about other people. Very common with Saturn and Sagittarius because for Saturn and Sag, it's not like so serious. It's like all a comedy. It's all a joke. But Saturn is like, there's more of like a serious implication with things. So watch out for not taking things seriously. Watch out for accidentally kind of a being the type of person that you're always um, not wanting to be. 
again, it's chaotically in a roundabout way getting to where it wants to go. So that's just what I'm kind of speaking about. But once this place, like, like this placement is like an entry point. It's like the ability to have the music career. It's like the ability to have the creative career, the ability to be like the master of your own time. And at least like, you know, even if this circadian rhythm is kind of messed up, like you have the ability to even have that, you know, like a circadian rhythm issue, the ability to even have that shows that you have quite a lot of time. So, um, taking the advantages as they come and striving towards that creative potential is best for this placement. Okay, moving on, let's talk about Saturn in Capricorn. Okay, so this is Saturn's home sign, uh, arguably Saturn's favorite sign of Capricorn. It is what Saturn is transiting in as I'm making this video in November of 2020. And uh, that's why I'm making the Saturn video is because it's direct and healthy and it's favorite sign of Capricorn at the last degrees. So it's like great to um, see Saturn for what it is uh, at this time of making this video. Um, uh, basically, uh, Capricorn rules the 10th house. Capricorn is a cardinal earth sign. Uh, Saturn is also the natural 10th house and the natural tallest, most elevated uh, status oriented planet. Um, and therefore these two energies come together really well and make for very, very impeccable goal setting, uh, realistic goals, achievable goals, and an incredible natural ability to fill in the gaps of like point A and point B of goal setting. So great for progress. Like these people with Saturn and Capricorn have an incredible ability to like slowly climb and gain power over time. They never risk anything. They're never reckless. They're never, you know, I never say never, but most of the time they are not reckless. They do not risk. They do not do things that are inappropriate for getting to where they want to be. And that's that. Let's move on to Saturn in Aquarius. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Saturn in Capricorn is um, also really lucky in value and how they prescribe value to their lives and, and how they value everything around them, their physical reality. Also, it's very hard for them to detach themselves from what that means to their future. So there is always this sort of lingering feeling of, okay, what does this house do for my future? What does this job do for my future? What does this marriage do for my future? What is this exercise regimen doing for my future? Like there's kind of a time issue with Saturn and Capricorn. And, and while they have impeccable timing, kind of like Saturn and Cancer, they are incredible at being places on time. They tend to get to places early or arrive perfectly on time. Um, always very timely very good at being where they need to be um, always in the right place at the right time to time is on their side okay they have good timing that's the best thing about this placement also saturn and libra has this too they have good timing whenever they're requesting a job they're in the right place at the right time and they tend to get the job whenever they're reaching out to somebody you know how we all have those people in our lives that just reach out to us at the most horrible time like and that kind of really affects the relationship like you just know like when you get into a really chaotic moment and you just need to be with yourself like that person's going to somehow reach out to you or like they're going to call you like right at the worst possible time um that's never the case with this placement they are calling people at the right time and they tend just by virtue of their timing to have a good um relationship with people even if they're not great characters or they have like major personality flaws just the timing by which they arrive in people's lives or the timing by which they show up somehow masks over any of their personality flaws so that's very powerful the power of timing for saturn and capricorn also the power of stick with itness and endurance for this sign conviction you know um sturdiness uh self-conditioning um, pushing through this so sort of this feeling that something bigger will allow them to um, maybe contract or limit themselves now but expand later they've got just a great understanding of how life ebbs and flows the give and take the contraction and expansion and it all just kind of works out to get them where they want to be um, gotta watch out for questioning it though like questioning okay I, I know that I've got this I know that I have this in the bag but what more can I do overworking is possible um, doing things that aren't necessary um, you know doing or spending money that never needed to be spent to ensure that things are secure, like over security oriented mindset. Like th those are some of the potential negatives, which there aren't many for this placement. Also just a sort of unemotional, um, austere projection, like where maybe you never cry or no one's like really ever seen you cry as a Saturn and Capricorn. No one's ever really seen you have a lot of different expressions. Um, it depends on other placements of the chart with that one. But typically, 
unless you've got like a really strong like moon conjunct Jupiter in Pisces or something and you're like very emotional. Typically it's an unemotional placement. Typically it's um, sturdy and a bit one-toned in the expression. And in this way, like it's perfect for many careers and many, uh, you know, uh, poker face oriented things where you need to keep your cards at your chest. Um, though relationships do kind of struggle with this placement just because there's a one-tonedness about the Saturn and Capricorn person. And even if they feel very like emotionally flexible and adaptable, it's just not seen that way. So um, relationships tend to be a bit boring sometimes for the people with Saturn and Capricorn. And um, also Saturn and Capricorn people can be labeled as boring people or unexciting or um, too safe or too secure, which is not a bad thing, you know, especially with the world the way it is right now. Like these are the types of people that I think are the most attractive are people who have, um, you know, really stuck with what they need to stick with and um, have been able to uh, maintain their security. Um, watch out for t over frugal mindset though as well too much saving greed gotta really watch out for greed if this is connected by like a square to Pluto or something or um, you know like a conjunction to Venus uh, greed envy um, you know a completely like money oriented mindset it's a very uh, fiscal energy very monetary very um, land oriented as well property stuff like that um, trust funds, all that type of stuff with Saturn and Capricorn, uh, which has been, um, you know, uh, possible for the last few years that we've had this transiting as well. So just thinking of the years uh, 2018, 2019, and 2020, these years are evocative of the energy of Saturn and Capricorn, and we can kind of see with having like economic crisis um, and, you know, the pandemics and everything like that, there is definitely, um, you know, that, that sort of more restrictive, control-oriented um, mentality that has been collective with this uh, time of Saturn and Capricorn. So it's similar with people with Saturn and Capricorn. They have that same type of mentality of like strong control, rigid, um, you know, uh, problem solving, um, you know, really trying to uh, be totally accurate and totally potent on the resolving of a situation and not giving up until things are completely settled and you know um it's very rigid and unemotional energy so um but again the people with this it's a blessed placement for saturn and the individuals with this placement have a lot of good karma coming from like a lot of lifetimes or a lot of time of like having to like work really hard and there's a reward with saturn and capricorn there's a huge reward in the lifetime with saturn and capricorn whether this is inheritance or just the most awesome experiences the most awesome relationships um trust having trust in your life having um you know uh allies having people vouch for you naturally good reputation all of that comes into play with saturn and capricorn so a very very good placement all around though with the planet saturn nothing can be uh, too easy so um let's see let's move on saturn in aquarius okay saturn in uranus sign uh Actually, before Uranus was discovered in 1781, uh, the traditional ru ruler for Aquarius had been Saturn uh, before that time. So Saturn is very fond of Aquarius. It is uh, traditionally at home in Aquarius. Um, and why is Saturn at home in Aquarius? It feels very strange to us now because we associate Aquarius with like um, eccentricity and, you know, um, sort of new age, uh, very adaptable and diverse tendencies and mentalities. Um, Actually, uh, Aquarius is a fixed air sign, so it uh, has always been represented by Saturn, and there is an aspect of Saturn that is very, um, you know, revolutionary and very uh, power-oriented in the way that we can um, collectively shape power through collective consciousness and ideas. Again, Aquarius rules over technology, the collective conscious uh, consciousness, the um, social media, media in general, which is also ruled over by Pisces and Neptune, but... The infrastructure of contact, of communication, of um, sort of like this like 20, 21st century technological revolution um, is all Uranus Aquarius territory, which is very powerful. So you see the connection to Saturn. Um, arguably, that is what our what, what power is based from at this uh, point in time is uh, the technology. So, you know, you can see the connections to Saturn in that way. So uh, Saturn and Aquarius people, though, at an individual level, um, are very um, c 
collectively minded. So they're very focused on 11th house issues. So, you know, society, um, any type of uh, revolutionary ideals are seen with Saturn and Aquarius, um, any type of, um, you know, uh, teamwork as well. So like any uh, team group activities that inspire some type of collective change is very evocative of Saturn and Aquarius. And um, I would also say that Saturn and Aquarius is very good at um, kind of like Saturn and Scorpio, fellow fixed sign, Saturn and Aquarius, really good at manifesting real um, transformations, really good at um, creating brand new ways of experiencing life. You know, if we think of technology again, like the internet, very much ruled by Uranus and Aquarius, um, Saturn in this sign gives somebody, I guess, the ability to maybe have like an internet career or the ability to have a social media career or the ability to have, um, you know, a following or a popularity in the internet. Like there are things like that that definitely come up. Um, more personally, though, for Saturn and Aquarius, um, there's just a different way that the I think the um, sort of the mind works with uh, Saturn and Aquarius and Saturn and Pisces people. So the uh, mind is not so blocked with Saturn and Aquarius. There's a very like open and fixedly open. What do I mean by this? Like a completely static open mindset where things never really close off. So they're closed minded really to nothing. Um, they are very interested in seeing open-mindedness, in seeing um, that there is a an acceptance of new ideas, an acceptance of um, not so much um, things that are already known, but things which are unknown. So there's a great curiosity to explore and show the unknown and show what has not been um, done before, okay? Uh, very scientific energy, great scientists, great computer programmers, great, um, I don't know, uh, creators of you know, like YouTube content, I would bet a lot of YouTubers have Saturn in Aquarius. Um, you know, anybody who's just really savvy with um, creative capability, kind of like Saturn and Sag we were talking about, except this is much more lucky and much more auspicious for like blasting off really easily. Um, astronauts, um, you know, uh, astrologers as well, Saturn and Aquarius. Many astrologers have Saturn in Aquarius. I know quite a few of them myself. I don't, but um, it is very good. Uh, good for people to enjoy astrology or to study astrology with Saturn and Aquarius. Um, great as a career as an astrologer or for astronomers to um, study of the galaxy, study of what's outside. Again, the, the 11th house, this is like Saturn and the energy of the 11th house, which is the farthest like point out, you know, that we can comprehend. The 12th house is like the uncomprehensible void. Um, so the 11th house is as far as we can really get out in our conscious comprehension. So yeah, like planets, stars, uh, anything along those lines is very much the territory of this placement. So um, great to have a telescope, great to have a kaleidoscope, looking at other worlds, looking at things really far away, uh, foreign affairs, anything dealing with um, foreign things uh, is really good as well. Things that have distance, things that are far away, Saturn and Aquarius, it brings it closer, it makes it real. And ultimately with Saturn and Aquarius, it's just very powerful. You know, the combination of Saturn and Uranus, um, you know, that sort of Titan energy comes together and they just have a very strong presence, a very strong, um, usually like opinion and position on things, very intelligent, very smart, very uh, quick, very healthy nervous system, very healthy discernment usually with this placement. Um, the only issue sometimes with Saturn and Aquarius is it can lose the thread of individualism. So it's very much like um, community based and, you know, collective consciousness and all about, you know, multiple people coming together and forming a certain momentum. Um, so it can sometimes stray away from like individual ideas. So it has to um, make sure that there is individual inspiration and it's more like um, collective goal setting. Um, but other than that, I think that this is a wonderful placement and um, so just so empowering. And Saturn is about to transit into Aquarius as well into 2021. So um, we will have a lot of more examples about what Saturn in Aquarius will uh, be about. And with the uh, certain momentum that we have now, maybe Saturn in Aquarius will be a lot about, you know, um, uh, recovery efforts and about, um, you know, collective healing. And I do see that that placement uh, is all about um, collective healing as well, uh, though it can sometimes get 
a feeling of being like misplaced within that as well because obviously that's a very large undertaking so like huge undertakings with saturn and aquarius is um very prevalent so like uh, huge projects huge um huge goals huge motivations that have many different moving parts so their things can get a little bit like um sort of misconstrued as there's so many moving parts so many moving cogs to the saturn and aquarius energy so um one person cannot really control all of the energy of saturn and aquarius it's a very uh, mul multitude of different moving parts so um let's move on uh, saturn in pisces so Saturn in Pisces is the final sign that we'll talk about today. Um, it is Saturn in Neptune's sign, Saturn in the energy of the 12th house. So um, very artistic energy, very great for um, actually bringing art into the real world, wonderful for musicians, wonderful for actors, wonderful for poets or writers, um, or anybody who's trying to create a feeling of immersion or visceral exploration into the human condition so this one is also quite psychological saturn and all the water signs is a little bit tough and traditional astrologers found this to be a quite a, a difficult placement even though again saturn is not debilitated in pisces a lot of your traditional uh, interpretations of saturn and pisces are quite rough and quite um challenging because uh, pisces is again antithetical to what saturn is saturn is the uh, solid tangible unquestionable uh, factual aspects of life and Pisces is more so the hidden unknown unseen void area of life so bringing those two together is very antithetical and I think that while uh, an individual with Saturn in Pisces goal in life might be to um, I don't know explore the unknown or bring in uh, knowledge or tangible representations of the unknown while that is the case there's also um, a bit of a fear I see a lot of fear in this placement a lot of the time um, there can be like a fear mongering or just um, natural fearful nature and that's a lot of what the growth in Saturn and Pisces represents is overcoming fears overcoming uh, paranoia overcoming um, even like emotional issues okay so like emotional illnesses mental illnesses that is um, some not always prevalent with Saturn in Pisces but it can like run in the family again Saturn is like a, a family um, planet and Pisces does deal with um, emotional damage and emotional illness so um, you can see like inherited emotional disorders inherited uh, personality disorders if this is really like strongly aspected by like moon or uranus or pluto it's not in every saturn in pisces person but one of the most empowering things for saturn in pisces is to have like a great counselor a great therapist or a great i don't know astrologer or someone who can really help to understand their momentum and where they're really coming from the identity can start to get really uh confusing for saturn in pisces Pisces is also um, exalted by Jupiter, so kind of like Saturn and Sagittarius, um, there is a overexpansive nature to Pisces that is uh, annoying and frustrating to Saturn. So um, the sense of identity that Saturn does represent gets um, out of the lines or um, out of lane with Pisces energy. So sometimes these people don't really know who they are. They can't really decide what they want to do. They can't really choose a career. They can't really stay within the scope of where they currently are and that's not always a bad thing you know like sometimes that's where the greatest art comes from or the greatest stories or the greatest experiences through like sort of like defying i guess the like status quo um parameters though it does usually cause them quite a lot of um anxiety and a lot of uh, difficulty as they realize like okay what i'm doing or what i'm you know putting a lot of my life force energy toward is like very different and unknown and I can't really tell the momentum there, there's something about like a, a bit of like blindness with this energy and not really being privy to what they're really contributing to or what they're really creating though it can be very successful so like a, a lot of very successful artists have this placement especially if it is uh, aspecting Neptune so famous composers famous musicians famous artists um, who have done really well materially so it's Saturn and Pisces a lot of the time people think it's like a poor or poverty or can never like hold down a job and that can be true but they have an ability to like go huge as well and to be very universal okay very worldly very global very um you know everywhere the, the an interesting thing about saturn and pisces is it cannot be like stuck it cannot be um 
held in one place for too long or trapped, it really slips out of boundaries and slips through cracks, okay? Um, so Saturn rules boundaries, foundations, walls, um, you know, gates, doors, anything that stick makes people stuck or keeps people in one place. And Saturn in Pisces kind of gives a little bit of a superpower to kind of like slip through the cracks or slip through. So um, they're great escape artists, I would say. Um, they they usually have a great escape plan <laughs> for like any aspect of their life. So they move, I don't know, to some location and they're like, if I don't like it, I can go here. You know, they, they usually always have like, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to do this. They're great at making like a plan B. Um, they're great at sort of uh, defying the normal, average, typical momentum of things. This is also the case with Saturn and Aquarius, which I should have said for them as well, but Saturn and Aquarius is this way too, where they tend to get out of like typical momentum or they tend to be good like escape artists or good ability at like, you know, being unconventional, okay? So Saturn in Pisces is also quite unconventional. Um, they tend to, uh, like the position that they get, or like they might just fall right into a CEO position or without having to like climb the ladder, or they might, you know, go from like being a very um, wealthy landlord to working in like fast food or something. Like they tend to like have no typical orientation towards like status or anything like that. Um, again, Saturn rules over status and, you know, classification and all of that. And Pisces and Aquarius both um, give a completely unconventional take on that. Um, Saturn in Pisces also, it karmically walks out of so many things. So this is crazy. And it's a little bit funny. So like the people that I work with with Saturn in Pisces, which are, which are quite a few, Saturn in Scorpio and Saturn in Pisces and Saturn in Aquarius people love to work with astrology. They, they, a lot of, I've had many clients with these placements. Um, so I know them quite well and I know this placement quite well. Um, what I see is that, uh, they just, cannot seem to get like stuck in a relationship or they cannot seem to get stuck in any career. It's like so quickly if things are wrong or if things are not working out, they will like just karmically walk out of it and slip right out of the relationship and it's like done. And they don't even try, like they don't even like break up. Like sometimes it happens before they're ready too. So a breakup happening before they're ready, even though they know a breakup needs to happen the end of a career coming before they're ready, even though they know that it needed to happen. There's a lot of premature endings with Saturn and Pisces. Okay. And it can be hard for the conscious mind, though what they've actually done is they've accessed, because again, Saturn in the 12th sign, the very final sign, the most mature sign, although it has traditional difficult implications, there's something really good about this placement too, because Saturn is the uh, penultimate maturity, and the 12th house, is, 12th house is the most mature house, the oldest sign. So in a way, this placement is actually good for Saturn because it's the most mature, oldest energy. So with that, there's a, gra a grave responsibility, I'll say, to know when things need to end, to know when things need to be over, to know when it's time for closure, to know when it's time to say goodbye to a situation, to know when um, no more resuscitation needs to be done toward uh, something that has ended or is over, to accept finality. Okay, that's a big thing with Saturn and Pisces. They sometimes like want things to be brought back to life. Also with Saturn and Scorpio, they want for things to be um, permanent or immortal or unbreakable or a guarantee of constancy. And that will never happen. About the time that they are um, an incapable of leaving a partner or incapable of experiencing life without any status quo aspect of life, it will probably walk away from them because this sign, I think, is always tested on how it can um, slip in and out and how it can adapt. Saturn in a mutable sign, again, how it adapts in a physical, um, material way to uh, unexpected circumstances. So um, it comes with a lot of advantages, but with a lot of pain. This can also be like the uh, conservation of pain, the conservation of difficult times with Saturn in Pisces, um, the romantic romanticization of difficult experiences, the celebration of difficulty in a way that can be good, you know, um, but I believe it was, I said this in Saturn and Cancer as well, but they kind of will um, maybe sometimes prolong difficulty or prolong uh, grieving periods prolong bereavement and there's nothing wrong with that like some people just have to do that and this is one of those signs that it has to take its time with uh, coping and with um, grieving okay as there's like maybe a lot to grieve in the lifetime of a Saturn in Pisces there is something quite uh, sad about the things that they go through um, again Saturn is a prolonging consistency creating energy and in the sign of Pisces which deals with like grief and suffering a lot of the time 
and um, also like um, almost like a religious level healing from those things and carrying those things as if they're a certain um, strength behind you. Um, it's just indicated that these people have quite a few emotional extremes to process. Also, they tend to have a lot of psychic experiences, a lot of out-of-body experiences, and it can be hard for them to keep focused on things too. So um, it's hard for them to keep their attention. Um, you know, really long jobs that are boring to Saturn and Pisces and have a very repetitive, focus-oriented you know, process, not great for Saturn and Pisces. They need a more eccentric, unconventional career, so like self-employment perhaps, or um, anything that is uh, not constant, so maybe a lot of traveling, or maybe something that gets them in different environments to do their job, because like Saturn and Aquarius, these two are very similar, um, like Saturn and Aquarius, it's very unconventional. Also, you know, like careers in astrology, careers as a psychic person, careers in something that requires a strong, well-honed intuition. So also like a chef or um, an investigator or someone who has to just be very good with their instinct um, is a great place for Saturn and Pisces to be because it's a wonderfully physically honed intuition, a great ability to... Um, have foresight or foreshadowing of events and it's not always correct you know it doesn't mean that Saturn and Pisces are like you know always right uh, every human can sometimes struggle with uh, predictive um, you know experiences but it, it's so usually spot on with Saturn and Pisces that they can really uh, use it to their advantage um, but with that also comes a bit of like, um, you know, paranoia sometimes. They can be afraid of doing things wrong. This is the Pisces Virgo axis still. So there's a little bit of a nitpicking perfectionist, um, like uh, terrified of doing things slightly wrong with Saturn and Pisces, but it's really hard for them to do things right. And I don't mean to be like um, any sort of way to Saturn and Pisces, but it's so unconventional and it's so like um, sometimes unfocused that uh, there are usually quite a few things that are left kind of not properly done okay or like not totally like cemented together right in a status quo way so as business owners or as lawyers or as um any profession that requires a lot of like um very procedural focused organization uh, they need to maybe outsource this or they need a second pair of eyes for sure um because it's not that they can't do it on their own. They usually can do this fine because, again, they're on the Pisces-Virgo axis. But um, they will sometimes not trust themselves that they've done things correctly and they'll maybe lose sleep and be like, oh my gosh, have I done this correctly? What if I've messed up? What if I... There's a lot of like what if issues. What if this happens? What if that happens? Um, so they can kind of get themselves in a bubble. All the water sign Saturns are kind of like this where they will kind of be overprotective or over safe with things actually because they know of their nature. Saturn in a water sign, it's like... Um, defying the nature of Saturn so there's a leakage or there's a slipping out or slipping through thing so they've had a lot of experiences where they've like lost or unexpectedly just kind of fallen out of situations and it's been like maybe traumatic so they do usually eventually become quite perfectionist quite um safe with what they do uh so um that's not always right for them they need to kind of be risk takers and chance takers sometimes but not always it's about cultivating that discernment and about knowing uh the art of timing um because they really can start to understand that but it's a beautiful beautiful placement great for emotional understanding a great placement for a therapist or for a um you know grief counselor or even like like deep trauma counselors or something or people who um maybe uh help uh any type of like victims who have gone through anything to like cope um or anything dealing also with like substance abuse or anything um healing from that or uh counseling from that like i, I feel like saturn and pisces people can um get to people who have been through like the most difficult things and like give them a rope down and like pull them back up there's a great ability to transform and to um help people to heal who are ready to heal so it's it's important to think about for saturn and pisces and above that um that can be taken to a larger scale too like um you know creating entire businesses that uh help to um you know uh 
guide or, or help to offer, I don't know, the perfect coffee shop or the perfect comforting um, things, like things that bring comfort. Saturn in Cancer can also do this well, but it's totally debilitated, so it struggles a little bit more. But Saturn in Pisces can be that in-between point of like not being like debilitated or exalted that is sometimes perfect to like create and manifest the perfect comfort. So uh, knowing how to make the perfect coffee, knowing how to make the perfect meal and building businesses around that, that's totally possible with this placement. Bringing comfort and bringing... Um, art or enjoyment or healing to the masses is very, um, is how this uh, placement functions at its highest vibration. So anyway, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for Saturn and Pisces and also all of the Saturn signs. Thank you so much for being here on this journey that we've taken. We're about at two hours and 15 minutes almost. So what a long video. Wow. Um, videos like this are a huge, huge effort to make. As you guys know, not many YouTubers make videos that are this long and it does take a lot of process. So if you would like to become a member of my Patreon page, I'm going to link it below. You can get uh, readings early and ad free. And I also do weekly forecasts over there that are um, only on Patreon at this time. So that's linked below in the description box. Also, if you're interested in any of the other placements, any of the other planets, I've got um, many other installments in this series, so you can look at other planets in your chart, check your placements, and see some interpretations for them. I will link that playlist below. And as always, your likes, comments, and subscribes make my day. Like this video, hit that red subscribe button, and comment below and let me know how it resonated. Uh, let me know what your Saturn sign is below. I'm curious to see which Saturn signs actually watch this video. So first and foremost, comment below this video. Let me know what your Saturn sign is. And um, thank you so much for checking out my video on Saturn and astrology. I will talk to you all soon. Much love. Bye.